let's take a look at how we do that. The first step, of course, is to have the wires uh, prepped so that they can be soldered on properly. And if you can see here, I've basically taken, taken the sheath or the, the wrapping off of the tips of these wires here. And uh, what you want to kind of make sure is that the amount that you take off isn't too huge. You don't need a lot of exposed wire. These are very, very small pads. So don't take off too much. If you do take off too much before you solder it on, you can always trim it back. So I'm just going to put these here yep, into the helping hands very quickly so I can, there we are, put some solder, on, solder onto those. So they'll be ready to go. But now all of these ends are properly, properly tinned. So what we're going to do is now attach them to the appropriate place on here. And I happen to know because I was just looking at the diagram that the pins um, go from here in the order of the ground, the voltage, the transmit out, the one that goes out, and the one that comes in. So what I'll do is just use some of the colors here appropriately. Make sure that's on the screen so you can see here what's going on. And just put these in place. That should do it for here. Now, having done that, we do want to double check to make sure that no, no solder has bridged any of those, which does not seem to be the case. It looks very clean. Check on the back to be sure as well, and that seems quite good. So there we are. Now, this being the receiver, we need to attach it um, to the flight controller. And this particular flight controller sort of set up automatically to take a receiver right down here on these pins in the first row. There's a ground, there's a 5 volt, there's the RX2 and the TX2, so the receive and transmit of UART number 2. And they're all just right together there in a row, which makes it perfect for us to, to connect to. So that's exactly what we'll do. We'll connect ground five volts and then we'll just make sure that we get the the right one of these to the right one there and we will be golden so like always we'll pre-tin the pads it's going to take a moment here to warm them up we want to again always let heat from the iron get into the pad and then the heat that's in the pad should be what melts the solder. I'll do that. I'm very close here. There we go. So those are all tinned. And if we find the receiver. What we just need to do now is solder in each of these wires into its appropriate place. So the ground and the uh, power ones, are, or the current one, is quite straightforward. So we'll take the ground and 
solder it in. We'll take the power and put it into here. Now this particular pad is labeled as 4V5. And what that means is that it's producing four and a half volts. And that's important because when this actually gets powered on from a USB cable, the, the five volt uh, regulator on here, the five volt pads do not get powered, but the 4.5 volt pads do get powered from a USB, which means we don't need to plug in a battery in order to, to make sure that our receiver is working and do a lot of things with the receiver and radio setup. If we used a five volt pad to power this, then we would also need to plug in a battery to have any kind of power coming into the receiver, which is not what we want. So that's a nice thing to do. It's a very smart thing on this board. So the next two are on the receiver part over here. The white is coming off of the receiver's TX pad and the blue is coming off of the receiver's RX pad. And so these need to go to the opposite. So this one here is TX on the receiver. The other end should go to the RX on the flight controller. It transmits and over here it receives. This one transmits and over here it receives. So we need one wire for each. And so what we have to do then is look at the ones on the board and find the one that says TX2 and RX2. And they are just directly in a row two. So the white was TX over here. So it should go to RX on the board. And that is the very next pad, the RX2. And so we'll just do that. Whoops. Oh, that is just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit long, I think. Just take a piece off of that. All right, here we go. Now, if you somehow manage to get these two reversed, uh, nothing bad is going to happen. You're not going to make fires happen or smoke come out of all of your components. Basically, what will happen is that the receiver won't talk to itself. It'll power on, but... Um, it just doesn't, instead of having a mouth where it is, it's got the ears. It's just thinking backwards. And so that's it to solder it on and have it connect. Put an, oops, put an antenna on here like that. And, um, that should be basically okay to try. Now I